Hey there everybody, Avra here. And wow, can you believe the Micromod ecosystem we just released? If you haven't gotten a chance to check out the specs yet, look at Rob's post from this past Wednesday because there's a lot to unpack and it's all pretty darn cool. We built Micromod with the vision that we could take customizing to the next level. See, engineers and hobbyists like yourselves understand what it's like to prototype when you need technology to move as quickly as your ideas do. So when your project needs more processing power or Bluetooth capabilities, instead of grabbing an entirely new board to re-rig your setup, now with Micromod, you can just quickly swap out your processor or carrier board and get right back to prototyping. It's as easy as a couple twists, a quick switch, and voila, you've got yourself a new board that opens up dozens of possibilities. Let's dive a little bit deeper into one carrier board and see how swapping the processor board can change the project. Let's say I've got a pizza shop in town and I make a mean margarita. I've got a couple of new delivery drivers and I've had some customers call me saying they've received haphazard pizzas. I have an inkling that these drivers are driving like they're out of that DiGiorno's commercial, but I'm just not sure how to prove it. Well, it seems that the Micromod data logging carrier can help me answer that question. This board allows me to control power to the quick connector, as well as the dedicated power pin for non-quick peripherals, so I can choose when to power the peripherals that are collecting data. This low power control is ideal for the long car rides the board will undertake. It also has a charging circuit for single cell lithium ion batteries, as well as a real-time clock battery backup circuit to maintain power for an RTC on any Micromod processor board. As for the Micromod processor board that I'd like to use, I think I'll use the SAMD51, it's powerful and easy to develop with. Okay, back to business. I've got my pizza box and I'm gonna give it to the delivery guy with the Micromod data logging carrier board and the SAMD51 processor board. I've also attached the Ublox GPS dead reckoning board so that I can track where exactly the pizza goes and how fast the car is driving. I'll just save the data to the SD card on the carrier board. Well, now that I think about it, I'd love to see what kind of speed this pizza box undertakes in real time along with the SD card. So Bluetooth and Wi-Fi would be instrumental tools to have. That's no worries at all because I can iterate on the project easily and swap out my processor board for the ESP32 and immediately get back to building out my project to track the pizza. Now with the ESP32 on the data logger, we can use its Wi-Fi capabilities to create a Blink application that will display the location and the speed in real time while I'm back at the pizza shop. Plus, there's already a ton of documentation on connecting an ESP32 board to the Blink interface. It basically entails loading the app on a phone, choosing a device, in our case, ESP32, and a connection type. Blink will provide an authentication token that we'll use later in the code. From there, the app makes it easy to load in widgets and assign them to specific pins. To track the pizza, we'll need a map as well as value displays for latitude, longitude, speed, and direction. On the Arduino side of things, it's important to first ensure that the SparkFun ESP32 boards are installed in the IDE. In the setup, we will connect the board to the Wi-Fi through the network and the authentication token. To send it with a delivery driver in this instance, it would be advantageous to connect it to a personal hotspot. All right, so we're gonna put all these boards in this super legit pizza box and send it off with the delivery driver. Using the widgets associated with the Blink library, we can display the location on the map as well as the GPS values in the value displays. Now, the app will track the location of the data logger as well as write the same data to the SD card so I can show the data to the driver later. Or if I wanted to, I could switch the ESP32 onto the input and display carrier board and print graphics using the hyperdisplay library to give me more information about the pizza. Because that's the cool thing about Micromod. If one processor or carrier board isn't working for the project, you can easily swap it out and continue on prototyping. There is no starting from scratch anymore. It's just iterating on previous designs. With all these new configurations, there are endless possibilities with the Micromod ecosystem. So what will you create? Check them all out at sparkfun.com today. Are you ready? I'm ready. Have you been rolling? Yep. All right. <laughs> That's great to know. Understand, cool. And see how changing the processor board can change a lot of things. I don't know, how should yeah. I do that better? <laughs> that was bad. Okay, great. We're gonna go over some hip terms right now. <laughs> In real time, 
And that means that I'll try this one more time.